Hello, my name is Pastor Mrs. Andretta Abebrese Tete, and today I continue the series, the truth series. And we've looked at the doctrine of God, that God is three personalities, but one God is a mystery. So we can't really understand it. We can't really put meanings to it. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We looked at the doctrine of angels that we see we have the angels of God, the good angels, and God created all the angels good, but some became fallen angels, and the, and the chief fallen angel is Satan. We looked at the doctrine of Satan, and we said that Satan is a fallen angel. He's not powerful like God because he's a created being, but God always sends his angels on our behalf. Today, we are looking at the doctrine of man. As children of God, we need to know these basic doctrines of Christianity, amen, so that we will not be blown away by any wind of doctrine, we will not be blown away by heresies and, and blasphemies, hallelujah. And on that note, I want to say that if you are a child of God, you need to have a hard copy of the Bible. See, so as a child of God, you must have a hard copy of the Bible. You must have one, not only on your phone, but a printed hard copy of the the Bible. We look at the doctrine of angel, of, of man. Amen. And man was created on the sixth day. God used, God created the, God created the heaven, the earth, and everything in six days and rested on the seventh day. So we're going to look at six aspects of the doctrine of man. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the origin of man, the nature of man, the original duties and responsibilities of man, uh, how man fell into sin man's present day condition and the destiny of man amen now let's look at the origin of man you know science tries to always prove things and always trying to reset things and science talks about the evolution theory that says that um, human beings evolved over a gradual process over many generations from sometimes simple things to complex things and evolution theory says that man evolved from the ape family well, can you imagine how intelligent god how intelligent man is and how complex man is how can anyone compare a human being to an ape i mean how can you compare a human being to an animal no it doesn't make sense so the evolution theory does not make sense and it's not supported so you see the evolution theory just does not make sense but as children of god we need to know the origin of man and the bible tells us the origin of man the bible is the undiluted word of god and whatever the bible says is true so let's look at genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 27. let's turn your bibles with me to genesis chapter 1. let's read the bible together verses 26 to 27. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verses 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So you see, that's the origin of man. God created man on the sixth day. Male and female created he them. So God did not create male and male. And God did not create female and female. God created male and female. He created a male and female, not male and male. And not female and female. So if you, look, if you look at even the animals, we have the male, we have the female. So all these things that is happening, that there are a lot of debates about it, and it doesn't make sense at all. It is a corruption from the devil. It doesn't make sense at all. But it is a corruption and a mockery from the devil. And don't be caught in that web. If you're a student and you go to school, don't be caught in the web of having relationship with the same sex. Don't be caught in that web. It's just a very demonic web that when you are caught in it, to take the grace of God to come out. Hallelujah. 
So what is the nature of man? Man was created in the image of God. Created he them. You see, God has three personalities. God the Son, God the, God the Holy Spirit, God the, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Man also has a body, has a soul, and has a spirit. So we have a body, this physical body. This is the physical body. You have a physical body. You have a soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And you have a spirit living in your body. The day your spirit man leaves your body, that's when you'll be declared as clinically a dead person. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. I pray God your whole spirit, soul, and body be, be, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That are, that will be, that will be that will be will be prepared blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! It is a mystery that we are we are we are have a body, we have a soul, we have a spirit, because God Himself is a mystery, and man is a mysterious being created by God. Hallelujah! Let's look at man's original duties and responsibilities. One, we were created to demonstrate and showcase the glory of God. We were created for the pleasure of God. Hallelujah. That is our original duty. We were, we were created to have fellowship. Because when you read the book of Genesis, man was found in the cool of the day and you'll be talking with God until man fell. But that was the reason why God created us. That we have fellowship. Not that God was a lonely God, no. But God created man to have fellowship with him. And it is a privilege for divinity to, to want to, to create a human being just to have fellowship with him. Hallelujah. It's a divine privilege for man to have fellowship with God. So this was the original intent of God for creating man. And if, as, and if you're a child of God, remember that God wants to have fellowship with you. Have time for him. Have time for God. You have time for everything, but have time for God. Make time for God. You make time for social media. You make time to hang out with friends. You make time to go to work. But why is that when it comes to the, when it comes to God, we are giving ourselves excuses? Sometimes you ask somebody, why didn't you come to church today? And the person will say, because I was tired. But when you are tired, you go to work. Hallelujah. And even when you have a headache, you go to work. You just take a you just take a, a painkiller and you go to work. But when you, when it's on a Sunday, you're supposed to go to church. You will say that I have a headache, so it is time for me to rest. Make time and fellowship with God, for that was God's intent for man. And the world is so much full of evil. Have time for God, so God will also have time for you. Have time for God, so God will also have time for you. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So what are the duties and responsibilities of the universe? One, God created Adam as the head of all nature. Created Adam and Eve to be the created Adam to be the head of all nature. Man was created to be the head of all nature. Man was created to be the head of all nature. In fact, to be the head of the universe. Hallelujah. That is how powerful God created the human being. No wonder. In the book of Genesis, Adam, all the animals were brought before Adam and Adam named each and every one of them. And whatever name he gave to the animals, so it was up till today. Man was created to care, to care for the garden of the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And the Lord God took man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. And as a child of God, you must know that just as Adam was given the responsibility to dress and keep Adam. You have a responsibility to keep the mandates and the purpose of God for your life. You must find out what is the purpose of God for my life. Why was I born? Why was I brought on this earth? No one is a mistake. God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for you. And it is time that if you do not know the purpose of God for your life, it is time to seek God in prayer, seek God in fasting. Let him reveal your, his purpose for your life. And when he reveals it to you, don't turn back. 
address it keep it move in the mandate of god for your life no matter the challenges that comes your way no matter what comes your way move in the mandate and the purpose of god for your life hallelujah amen and one of the one of the duties and responsibilities of man was that you are supposed to multiply and replenish the earth that means that whatever your hand finds doing it must multiply it must be fruitful hallelujah whatever you are asked to do as a child of god in church whatever department you are placing at the workplace in the corporate world in the business whatever your hand finds doing it must multiply it must be fruitful hallelujah we were created to have dominion Adam and Eve were created to have dominion, and that is the position of man. We are created to dominate. Dominate your environment. Dominate in your career. Dominate in your education. Dominate in your family life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you have the mandate and the dominion to condemn it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper amen man was created to enjoy all the fruits of the earth hallelujah you have been created to enjoy the fruit of your labor and any agenda from the pit of hell from the devil to deny you of the fruits in the name of jesus stand up in that dominion and condemn it in the name of jesus christ then man fell into sin hallelujah so God gave every blessing to Adam, and there's only one thing that he denied him. That was eating from the tree of, of knowledge. That man fell into sin. Nothing was denied Adam except the fruits of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. When you read Genesis chapter 3, that was when man fell into sin and disobeyed God and ate from the fruits. Eve was deceived. But it was Adam that sinned. And it's amazing how women have been marginalized. The women have been, ha, have been so marginalized as if we are the problems. We are the root cause of the problems of this world. And some people erroneously who don't know the scripture say that because it was Eve, that it was not Eve that sinned. Read the Bible. The Bible says that Eve was deceived. But sin came from one man, Adam. And that is why from one man comes salvation. That is through Jesus Christ. So sin did not come by two persons. It came by just one person called Adam. Hallelujah. It led to a lot of curses. Curses on the serpent that deceived them, the devil. Curses on the physical serpent that the devil used to deceive Adam. So till date, the serpent crawls on the belly and eats us till date. And science has proved that there's some, yeah, when they look at the inside of, of snakes, there's some that shows that they, they, they have like, legs that could have that should have come out of their body but it never comes out never develops out of their body see the word of god is true so the serpent was cursed satan himself was cursed enmity was put between him and the seed of the woman and that seed of the woman is no other person than jesus christ the bible says that he will bruise the heel but the good news is that even though we went through a lot of cases shame fear discord suffering labor was pronounced on man thank god that jesus christ has come to pay the penalty of sin so you are no longer under any case you're no longer under any generational case any familiar spirit in your family that tries to perpetrate traits in your family like miscarriages like treating your family like premature death like treating their family like you work but you but you don't see the fruit of your labor money comes into your hands and leave your hands every generational curse in your family as a child of god has not got any hold on your life and because of that you can stand upon it and break every generational care because though a man was cursed because of the sin of adam jesus christ has come to pay the penalty of our sin hallelujah now let's look at that let's look at let's look at the man's present day condition man's present day condition so the condition of man the present day condition is that for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of god all men are born sinners we are all born with the seed of man we are all 
Oh, we all originate from one person called Adam. So we are born of sin. In sin, our parents conceived us. So we are prone to sin. We are prone to we are, we are not prone to doing good works, but we are rather prone to, to sin. And that is man's present day condition. And until you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, you are separated spiritually from God. Hallelujah. And when you become a child of God, you must not be a carnal man. A carnal man is a carnal, is a child of God, a Christian, a child of God who walks in the dictates of the flesh, who walks as if he's not born again. So you are born again, but you do everything as if you are not born again. You are born again, but you do things like the people of this world. What is the difference between you and an unbeliever? That is called carnality. God has not called us into carnality. You can refer to 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 3. We also have the natural man. Natural man, the natural man is somebody who is not born again. Then we also have the spirit controlled man. And as children of God, when you read the book of Romans, chapter 8, read the book of Romans, if you read, if you read 1 Corinthians 2, verse verses 15, the Bible admonishes us to be spirit controlled. We must be controlled by the Holy Spirit. We must be led by the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at lastly the destiny of man. The destiny of man. The destiny of man is that anyone who has not accepted Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, heaven is not your place of abode after death. There is life after death. There are a lot of teachings that say that there is no life after death. We have teachings, we have teachings from the from other religions that say that when man dies, man goes into oblivion. Other religions say that when man dies, man becomes like the galaxies in the star, like the stars in the sky. Some believe in reincarnation where you can be born, you can be born to this earth. If you do something good, you can be born into this earth again, reincarnated into a better person. All these are lies from the pits of hell. Some don't also believe in the existence of God at all and believe that man becomes nothing when they die like the atheists. Amen. Some also believe believe that um, when you die, you are you are just and if you don't know God, you are just an annihilated from God and all lot, a whole lot of teaching. Some believe in soul sleep where we sleep in between death and the resurrection we sleep and these are some doctrines that some christians are perpetrating which is false doctrine which is not the true doctrines that there's so sleep between death and resurrection but what does the bible say about destiny of man if you have accepted jesus christ as your lord and personal savior when you die you are just absent from this body but you are present with the lord jesus christ you can refer to revelation 6 verses 9 to 12 on your own and refer to philippians chapter 1 verses 23 to 24 some believe also in purgatory which is also not scriptural hallelujah it's also not scriptural if you want to if you want to refer you can refer to hebrews chapter 9 verses 11 to 14 you can refer to hebrews chapter 10 verses 12 and verses 16 to 17 hallelujah there's not like purgatory there's not like when when you die your loved ones who are alive can do something can do a service or give a gift on your behalf and uh, your time of suffering between between your death and resurrection will be shortened by the lord this is nowhere written in the bible set from the scripture genesis revelation this is unscriptural and this is a false doctrine hallelujah amen and some people also believe that if you are, if you are a child um, if you are, if you are a child and you are not baptized you go into a place of happiness a place of happiness for people who are not baptized and because they baptize babies but in the bible there was no place where babies were baptized jesus christ was baptized as a full-grown adult man he was baptized as a full-grown person so you don't you don't baptize babies you don't baptize babies you don't baptize babies because babies don't know anything rather you have tell when the person has gotten to a point where he, he knows good from what from evil and all these are not teaching that is not in the bible jesus christ said these children their angels are always before me that was jesus christ said in matthew chapter 18 verses 1 to 10 he said their angels are always before him hallelujah so the destiny of man according to the bible is that before Jesus Christ died, when man died, they, they went to a place in the earth called Hades. And in that Hades, there's a place called Paradise. In Hades, that was separated for people who were who knew God. 
and who were not walking in sin, but who knew God. But you see, when Jesus Christ died, the Bible said that he led captivity captive. So he he so he went led captivity captive. And now we no longer have a paradise in Hades. No. When you die in Christ, you are absent from the body, but you are present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So when you read, when you read Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15, you will see the souls of men that had, that had died. Let's read Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Turn your Bibles with me to Revelation chapter 20. Revelations 20, verses 11, verses 11, and I read, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Hallelujah. So you see, they were standing before God. Hallelujah. They were what? They were standing before God. And we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ as Christians, where we we'll give an account of how we have led our lives on this earth. Hallelujah. And even if your brain is in the book of life, God will ask you, how did you live your life on this earth? Amen. Hallelujah. So I wouldn't want to go into detail, but I want you to know that Hades is reserved for those who don't know Christ Jesus. And at the end of the ages, when Jesus Christ comes to judge the whole world, Hades will be thrown into the lake of fire that is reserved not for man, but reserved for the angels, the, the devil and his fallen angels. But if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, heaven is your home and being with Christ is your home. This is the doctrine of man. We will continue with another doctrine in our next truth series. The Lord bless you. Look at the doctrine of the church. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. My name is Pastor Mrs. Andretta. Have a blessed Tete. Amen.